Masculine and feminine energy are the perfect complementary opposites, and so therefore there are quite a lot of differences between the two. So let's talk about those major differences between the masculine and the feminine. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk about things like feminine energy, self-improvement, and wellness for women. So if that's something you're into, you should absolutely subscribe and stick around. So every single person has both masculine and feminine energy within them. It doesn't matter their gender. But in general, women tend to naturally have more feminine energy and men tend to naturally have more masculine energy. Of course, not always, but that is usually the case. And aligning with our authentic energy is usually how we feel the best in our life and reach the most success and usually have the most relationship satisfaction as well. But I think it's really helpful to understand some of the major differences between these two energies because understanding these differences will better help you to understand these energies individually. And they will usually help you better understand relationships as well. So let's just dive on into it. So the masculine is the doing energy and the feminine is the being energy. So what this means is that the masculine energy, and of course, everything I'm talking about in this entire video is all generalities, but the masculine Masculine energy is more of that outward external energy, whereas the feminine energy is more of that inward energy. So the masculine projects more of their energy outward, the feminine projects more of their energy inward. Another way you can look at this is that the masculine energy exists on a physical plane, whereas the feminine energy exists more on an energetic plane. Now what this means in real life is that the healthy masculine tends to focus on doing things, accomplishing things, making an impact on the world, whereas the feminine tends to focus more on how they feel. feel feeling love feeling peace, feeling inspiration, feeling connection. And again, remember we all have both masculine and feminine energies within us and that's what makes us well-rounded. But this is why there has been such a war on masculinity and masculine energy these days with many people saying that masculine energy is bad. Because masculine energy is the more outward external energy, when a man is not in his healthy, mature masculine, when he's in his shadow masculine or wounded masculine, whatever you wanna call it, which unfortunately many men are these days, this can be destroyed destructive because that energy is so outward. This is what leads to crime, war, volatility, extreme aggression, trying to control and dominate, all of that bad stuff that we don't want. The shadow masculine is basically so easy to see and notice, or as the shadow feminine, because it's more internal, is not as easily seen and noticed by the world at large. If a woman is in her unhealthy feminine or her shadow feminine, then she's more likely to be codependent, have a victim mentality, be depressed, be be judgy, but all of these things are kind of more like kept to ourselves. So because the masculine is more of that outward impactful doing energy, they have the responsibility of projecting that in the right way. And the truth is, is that we don't need less masculine energy. We actually need more, but more healthy masculine energy, the kind that brings leadership, peace, structure, protection, etc. Next major difference between the masculine and the feminine is that the masculine is the more like thinking logical energy, whereas the feminine is more of the feeling intuitive energy. One of the feminine strengths is her capacity to feel and to tap into her intuition and to just know things because she knows it. The feminine is usually much more in touch with energy, whether she realizes it or not, and making a decision 100% based off of just like logic, numbers, and practicalities that usually won't feel good to her. She also needs to tap into her body and her intuition and see how that decision actually feels to her, feels in her body. Does it feel good or does it feel off? This is really important to the feminine. Whereas the masculine really likes to rely on things like factual knowledge, logic, numbers, etc. So one thing that the world sometimes does though is that it teaches us that listening to how something feels and listening to our intuition is immature or silly but it's not, it's one of our strengths. And one of the strengths of the masculine is that they're more likely to be able to make difficult decisions when they need to because they're able to leave emotion out of it. So both attributes can be helpful in certain situations. So again, this is why we work together so well. This is why they are the perfect complementary opposites and this is why we make such a good team. Third difference, the masculine is more linear while the feminine is more cyclical and our hormones support this as well. But what does this actually mean though? Because the masculine is more linear, they tend to do really well with structure, consistency, routine, one solid single focused direction. And the hormones are the same every single day too. So again, more of that consistency and routine. This will generally make the masculine feel their best and feel like they are succeeding and doing good in life. Whereas the feminine is more cyclical, or you can think about it like we operate more in waves. Our hormones follow a month long cycle as well. You know, we have our menstrual cycle and our hormones 
change every single day of the month. So they are not the same like a man. So where the masculine tends to thrive off of things like consistency and being a stickler for routine and having one single focus direction, this can actually be a little bit draining or uninspiring for the feminine. And if we force ourselves to stick to a routine day in and day out and not give ourselves flexibility, this can actually be anti-productive for the feminine because our body doesn't work that way. Our energy and our spirit doesn't usually work that way either. And it's important that we allow ourselves to follow those cycles or follow those waves. Now, unfortunately, the world we live in really prioritizes consistent output, but that is a very masculine approach. The feminine may be consistent on a month to month basis, but they're not meant to be consistent on a day to day basis. Now, of course, we can kind of have that daily consistent output if we need to. But what I'm trying to say is that that's not what makes the feminine feel their best and have the most positive impact on the world. We are meant to live and operate in cycles. Now, another difference between these two energies, and you can oftentimes really see this play out in relationships, is that the masculine is more focused on solving problems, fixing things, taking action. They don't really want to talk about it. Whereas to the feminine, many times talking is how we solve problems. To the feminine, talking is action. So oftentimes in relationships, this can cause some clashing because we go about solving problems in different ways. And this is kind of a silly example, but when two masculine men get into like a very heated argument, they're more likely to want to fight. You know, they want to like take action. Whereas to the feminine, if two feminine women get into a heated argument, they're more likely to want to argue verbally and maybe raise their voices, but they're more focused on communication. So if you're in a relationship with a masculine man and instead of him listening to you talk about an issue, he just wants to get to the root of the problem and solve it and move on, that is more the normal masculine approach to solving problems. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't care about you, you might just have to remind him that you being listened to does help to solve the problem and it does help you to feel loved. The fifth difference between the masculine and the feminine is that the masculine is more focused on outcome, more focused on results, meaning they're more likely to create purely to produce certain results. Whereas the feminine is more focused on the actual process of creation and is more focused on creating purely to create. So an easy example of this is cooking dinner. The masculine will cook dinner solely so that they can eat it. Whereas the feminine, of course, they wanna eat it and enjoy it as well and enjoy that final output, but they will also try to really enjoy that process of creating that meal. And they'll see that creation process as beautiful and meaningful to them. The feminine is the creation energy, and so they love to create. And sometimes the actual act of creation is more rewarding than the actual final product. So if you are a feminine woman or trying to get more in touch with your feminine side, then let yourself enjoy that creation process. Now, I've already sort of mentioned this one a little bit, but the masculine is more single focused while the feminine is more multi-focused. We have the capacity to have many things on our mind at once, to do many things at once, to juggle back and forth between many things at once, where the masculine is focused on one thing at a time and one thing only. And if they try to do more than that at one time, then they will oftentimes not succeed. So none is better than the other. It's just one way in which we differ. And I think it's really important that we respect our own processes for doing things. Now, David Dita talks about this in his book, The Way of the Superior Man, which I will link below for you guys. Um, this is a great book for any men who are trying to tap into their masculine energy, but he talks about how men, or I should say the masculine, they grow by challenge, whereas the feminine grows by praise. So what this means is that, of course, everyone to some extent grows in some ways through challenge and praise, but challenge is how the masculine truly levels up. It's how they build confidence in themselves. It's how they feel good about themselves. They grow the most through hardship or tackling obstacles or taking on responsibility or pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone to do new things. So if you want a more masculine minded person to take action in some way or do something, give them them a problem to solve and the why behind it because this will inspire them to grow and face those challenges. Now the feminine on the other hand grows through praise. Now of course we can handle challenges but that's not what makes us feel our best. When we are recognized for what we're doing right, when we are recognized for what we're already improving upon, then we have a natural inclination to do more of it because at the end of the day 
more than anything, the feminine wants to feel love. So when the feminine doesn't feel love, AKA criticism or things like that, she shuts down. She doesn't feel safe. So the feminine grows when they feel most supported and safe and the masculine grows when they face challenge. And especially when they're pushed to face challenges from other mature masculine men. And number eight, the masculine is the providing energy and the feminine is the receiving energy. So whether this is in relationships or within yourself, the masculine provides structure, leadership, protection, safety, and the feminine receives those things so they can focus on love, creativity, nurturing, beauty, relationships, etc. The masculine naturally feels really good and really satisfied when they provide as long as it is appreciated and respected. And the feminine feels really good and really satisfied when they are able to relax and receive, when they feel like they are safe and taken care of. So this receiving aspect is an important part of feminine energy. And even though it seems really easy, it's actually something that a lot of women struggle with. So if that's you, definitely go check out this video here, The Art of Receiving. I dive much deeper into this topic so you can really understand it and get better at it. So I will see you over there or I will just see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.